I agree that foreign troops should leave Iraq immediately, but the question to the panel is, if foreign troops were to leave today, would this lead to a more stable, democratic, and transparent Iraq? James Elgui, what do you think? I, I, I made the point very clear. I wasn't calling for them to leave today. I didn't want them to leave as irresponsibly and unilaterally as they entered. They have six months to do the job right, and that is to leave responsibly. We need to let the Iraqis solve this themselves with the surrounding countries, not under the table as they're involved right now, but sitting at the table openly, being balanced by other neighbors and other countries in the region so that we know what everybody's agenda is. No one's calling for an irresponsible leaving Iraq. All right, We're Raymond, looking for let, an let adult, Raymond, to Raymond, use my, to, to use my opponent's uh, argument, we're looking for an adult way of leaving and a mature way and doing in the next six months what we didn't do in the last 33, which is per per participating in a political process that leaves Iraq better than it currently is going right okay, now. Okay, let me bring Raymond Tanter in here. Jim Zogby, if you announce that you're going to leave, what you are signaling to Al-Qaeda in Iraq, either Al-Qaeda should hunker down and wait until the date certain has occurred and then go after Iraqi troops, or you launch widespread attacks against American forces in order to get the credit, the credit for having ousted the American forces. We're losing forces. more Americans every day now than we were a year ago. Here's the issue. If we announce we're leaving, the Iraqi government has a new and greater legitimacy than it's ever had before, number one. Number two, the insurgency loses its legitimacy and its credibility with those who currently support it. And number three, we will see other countries stepping to the table who currently will not step up to the table because they don't want to come in under an American umbrella. And one, one you, final you point. Three things, one sir. final you point. Said three. Okay, let, one, him, let him one, let him answer. One, one, no, answer this. one final Dabby, point with regard to the Gulf. Did with, you could you not speak? Could you not speak together? Did you Raymond? purposefully ignore my points about Al Qaeda in Iraq? No. Or did you forget them? No. They the Al-Qaeda in Iraq will either they hunker are down evil and they, they are an will... enemy, but they are not the major part of this insurgency, and we cannot ignore that reality. The baloney that's being offered about this being largely foreign is simply not true. There is an evil force in Iraq that is foreign, that is pursuing an aggressive anti-civilian agenda. They can be eliminated. Okay, and they let, will be eliminated by the Iraqis themselves. They're not going to be eliminated okay. by us. Ali al -Bayati. What I say to you is what I say to both my friends here. Let the Iraqi people say what they want to say. It is up to the constitutional Iraqi government that's coming in to decide on the future of the multinational force in Iraq. And once the National Assembly was going to be elected, which is a constitutional one, decide on a timetable, then this will be the right time for the multinational force to leave the country. Ali, they will, as long as the coalition force is there, the violence will continue. <clears throat> they will always be a target. Now, if we announce a phased withdrawal, given a, a given timetable, the Iraq's political, religious and tribal leaders can all be approached and they can appeal to the insurgents to lay down their weapons and let's have the soothing balm of reason, as I like to put it, and hopefully we can then see Iraq progress. She's had a mortal blow with this invasion, but, but Iraq can mend itself. All right, and gentlemen at the back. You, sir. Uh, my question is to the gentleman opposing the motion. Now, I think you're using the excuse of rebuilding Iraq or stabilizing Iraq as an excuse to stay forever. I mean, what measure steps, what strategy did you have to withdraw from Iraq. You're not rebuilding the Iraq uh, infrastructure. Okay, Raymond Townsend. Yes, the strategy that the Bush administration is moving toward is to move American forces closer to the border of Iran and Syria, to, away from population centers in Iraq, um, to make sure that the American forces are close enough to come to the aid of the Iraqi forces, but far enough away to give the Iraqis a sense of that they are in their own country with a, un, and not under occupation. That's but, the strategy that I think the Bush administration is moving toward. But I think the army you built is not uh, from all the Iraqi walks flight. I mean, you have uh, the army is full of uh, certain uh, religious type, 
and you are using them against the other, the, the other religions' uh, uh, opposition. So you are not really building a homogeneous Iraqi army that will take a fall, uh, take care of all Iraq, and you're using this Iraqi army, or so-called Iraqi army, to attack the own Iraqis. Okay, mean, let, let, him, let, him, let him answer that. No, I'll, I'll yield to my colleague. Oh, <laughs> you can't hear. No, no, I'll, I'll be happy. You, you'll be unusually shy. Yes, you're the, unusually shy here. The Iraqi nationalists are in the Iraqi army. There are militias that are, bec that are integrating themselves into a, an Iraqi national movement called the army. The army is the most, one of the most important institutions in Iraqi society, and I'm bullish. I'm optimistic that the Iraqi army will help to stabilize that country. And as, and as the Iraqi army stands up, America can stand down. That sounds all very well, but in September, the American commander said there was only one fully combat ready unit in Iraq. Can I, can I one that? single one out of 115 battalions. Who's going to stand up? Uh, one uh, unit? Can, I, with, can, stand I, can up. I answer you that? The Iraqi army and the Iraqi forces and the police